I'd like to welcome everybody to tonight's class on tactics. As you know, chess tactics are little three to eight move sequences of moves where one side has an advantage and they do a little combination to win a piece or a pawn, a knight fork, a double attack, something like that. I've been going through uh, combinations by a book by a Russian named Znazko Borovsky. It was written in 1936. It's a very good book though. And he has lots of nice examples. And he has themes. Every chapter has a different theme. So we did night forks and uh, things like that. Tonight the theme is what's called in chess the king chase where you get an attack on the king, but you route him out from behind his pawns, and you chase him across the board and corner him somewhere in the middle of the board and checkmate him. Now, as an introduction to this theme, and you'll see in, uh, when I bring up the notation, it'll have a heading that says, stalemate into checkmate. The first few examples are where the king is a, basically in a stalemate position, and some of them will be, will be draws. So if the king is, can't move, that's obviously a draw, but if the king is merely obstructed in moving, then the king's in a very bad spot. It means all, he can't really move anywhere. All you gotta do is deliver a check, and you can get checkmate. So that's why the topic is stalemate into checkmate. But our first few examples will be uh, how if you're defending, and you know, you've done this in your own games, where you, you know you have a bad position and you're likely to lose, maybe you're a pawn or two down, and you're desperate. So one of the defenses, if you happen to stumble onto it, if you can force a stalemate where you stalemate your own king, you, get, you can get a draw and avoid what would otherwise be a certain loss. So that, this is a study, this is not out of a game. One of the uh, grandmasters put this study together. And in this position, there is a way to force a stalemate or to force the pawn to queen. So, Black with the queen has an obvious advantage. White only has a knight and a bishop, and the bishop blocks our pass pawn. The only, th the only way we got a couple things going for us, the pass pawn is on only needs to go one square further to become a queen, and then uh, that queen would offset B Black's queen. But we also have a problem. See that black pawn on F3? And the pawn is attacking the square g2 next to our king, which is behind our h pawn. And if the black king gets out of the way, black will threaten queen to g2 checkmate. So as we figure out what happens, at a certain point you have to guard against that checkmate once that black king gets out of the, of the way of the black queen. So there's a way to work with these elements of the past pawn. You can see there's some checks with the knight and the bishop. The bishop can come back, sacrifice itself on f5. King takes, but then uh, the black queen threatens that queen to g2 checkmate. Anyway, uh, rather than guess, let's go into it a couple moves because it's quite complicated. Right here. Now, uh, who in the audience, so uh, what happens if king takes bishop? Yeah, pawn, prom pawn promotes with check, so uh, black doesn't get the checkmate. So he can't take the bishop, so he's got to move the king somewhere. What happens if he goes king to f6? Now he threatens the checkmate with the queen. Oh. 
and he threatens to take our pawn. What's the uh, drawing move for white? Who, who sees a good move for white here? Well, first you got, how can you guard the checkmate? That's the number one thing. Um, knight e3. Yeah, knight e3. Notice that it does guard the checkmate, but it indirectly guards the pawn because there's a knight fork. If the queen takes the pawn, we have a nice little knight fork of the king and queen. Now we threaten pawn up getting our queen. Is there anything black can do to prevent that? I don't see any checks anywhere. No king moves for black do any good. No pawn moves do any good. So I'm going to have to say that this, uh, this is good for uh, white gets out of his difficulty. It's not the stalemate of the main line, but this is sufficient because we are able to force our pawn up to be a queen, and we'll have a, a queen, bishop, and knight against queen. He, he can win either the, he can win the knight though, but uh, then we'd have a queen and bishop, but with his pawns, he probably, will probably be a draw. Anyway, let's go back. Now let's look at king to f7. Well, this is easy. Or is it easy? I was thinking it was easy. Maybe it's not. We still have to guard the checkmate. But the king obstructs the queen, and black doesn't threaten queen takes pawn, so I don't think the king moves any good. Okay. The only other move is to go to the rook file, and notice that uh, that's, this is the main line, but notice that's a horrible position for the king. He has no, he, he, he's almost stalemated himself. He's in front of the black pawn, he's on the rook file, he can't move the king. But at least uh, he does threaten the checkmate on g2, and he threatens queen takes pawn. Uh, so it looks like we stopped the checkmate with the knight move, which we already saw, but we don't have the knight fork when he does queen takes pawn. So let's see what happens. Okay, well, if we were playing this as a game, we might give up and resign here. However, it's, it's a study, and we know that it's a stalemate. Gives, encourages us to look a little further. Okay, any idea what the right move is for white? Knight to g4. Did you see it said new variation? When it's a new variation, it means I didn't get in and it's not the solution, but we need to look at it anyway. So what's your idea? How are you going to get a draw here? Oh, you're threatening mate. Yes. Knight, that's pretty strong. Absolutely. I like that. But he can defend it pretty easily by bringing the queen over, and then he threatens queen takes h4 pawn. How do you defend that? <laughs> yeah, so even though that was, you did have a pretty checkmate, we need something a little more forcing than that. This is particularly hard, but let me point out that the black queen has no checks on our king, at least immediately. Okay, I'm going to give us the next move because it, it would probably be here all night. The knight moves up and attacks the queen. That gains us a temple, and notice that the knight can check the king 
with your knight to f6 check, like you said, or he has f4 check. So black has to stop both those checks. It looks like he has to move his queen up to e5 to guard both those black squares. Let's see what he does. That's what he does. Okay, now notice that the white king has no moves. The black queen is on the black diagonal, so the white king can't go to g3 or h2. Notice that the pawn takes away the g2 square. White's own pawn blocks going forward, and the black king blocks the g4 square. Now, all you got to do is get rid of the knight and bishop, and it's a stalemate. That's the idea. What's the correct sequence of moves? I like knight to f4 check. Let's look at that. Now, if it says new variation, it's the wrong move. If it, if it accepts it, it's the right move. Oh, I like that. So it forces queen takes. Now what's the right move? We got to get rid of the bishop. The only way, we can't go to g4, right? g6, king takes. Oh, now the pawn can move. We got to get rid of the stupid pawn. How do we do that? Yeah, let's push that up. Notice it's with check. And notice that the queen still guards the h4 square. Our king still can't move. No matter what black does, it's stalemate. So that's our draw. Draw by stalemate. OK, let's look at another one of these things. This next one is another stalemate. It's a draw. So in this, this came out of a real chess game. The a white player was a grandmaster back in the uh, 18, uh, maybe the early 1900s, late 1800s, 1890s, named Miasis. And uh, white's in trouble. See that white's king can't move. It has to protect the uh, pawn on e6, blocked by the black king. It looks like uh, white's going to run out of moves. He has some pawn moves. It looks like black can run him out of moves. That, and if the king retreats to e4, black wins by king takes e6 pawn. Let's see how uh, he found a draw. Let's go through the moves. So it's white's turn. In this position, would you move your pawns one square at a time or two squares for your first move? One square, you don't want to run out of moves. So it's really quite simple from that point of view. So he moves that one up, and he could have moved the, the other rook pawn. And Black's going to do the same thing, because he wants to make the last move with the pawn to force white king to move back. So he'll move one of his pawns probably one square which he does. White does one more. Let's see what black does. OK, he blocks it. So now the uh, black has blocked the three pawns for white on the queen side. So no more moves there. Now we go over to the king side. One square, one square, one square, blocks it. Things are really looking desperate now. Let's see what white does in his desperation. Oh, he gives up a pawn. And he can't move. He got his draw. Very clever. We have one more draw to look at. Now, if you look at this position, you'll see that white has probably misplayed his game somewhere along the line. Black has two rooks and a queen. 
White only has a knight that's pinned against his king, and black threatens queen takes knight checkmate. And white has a queen, and white has a h pawn and the queen. But notice that if it weren't for the h pawn, which can either move up or take the pawn, and also notice that if it weren't for the queen, if you took the white h pawn and queen off the board, it would be draw by stalemate, right? All we got to do is get rid of the queen and the h pawn, and we get our draw. What's the right move for white? I would suggest that every move white makes has to be a check. Yep, that's the only good check I see. King over. Now what do we do? Let's go to g7. Oh, now the king's within our pawn. What's the last move? Pawn up check. King moves. And we got our stalemate. I guess the moral of the story is don't give up. At least till you check out your stalemate possibilities. Okay, one. now we're going into the, all the rest of wins for either black or white. So we're getting to the king chase part of the examples. This is a tense situation. Black is threatening queen to g2 checkmate. However, black has some weaknesses. His king is in the corner. And the white rook can go to e8 check, forcing either the bishop or rook back. And we have a possible smothered mate with knight to c7 check, knight to a6, queen to, to b8, rook takes a knight to c7 checkmate. So it's white to move, and obviously every move has to be a check or black gets the checkmate. So uh, any suggestions here? Yeah, yep, let's do that. Now, uh, do you think black should interpose with the bishop or the rook? Let's do the rook. Oh, he did the bishop. Let's do the rook. That's a new variation. In this case, that's not going to save him because we just do the knight check because the rook no longer guards. King over, double check, here, 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 smother mate. <laughs> yeah, so white weasels out in that variation rather nicely. So the only possible defense is to retreat the bishop, but it falls to the same thing. What's the winning move now for white? Yeah, rook takes bishop, and then we do the knight, and again, it's the same thing. So didn't we pulled it off. We have to spend a little time analyzing the position before we decide what to do. White to play and win, but we have to take into account the fact that black threatens queen to h1, checkmate, where the queen's protected by the knight on f2. Now, once again, we do have a possible check with the knight on e5 to f7. And if the king comes over, we had that same smothered mate with the knight to h6 double check. King back, queen to g8, rook takes knight to f7. That's going to be our saving grace. The uh, queen diagonal is blocked by that rook, though. Yeah, we got to stop the mate, and you're right, we got to get rid of that stupid rook. We can stop the checkmate by attacking the queen, and that's the right idea. So the main line is queen takes rook, and then we do... Oh, this is interesting. We don't start with the knight check, because the answer is rook takes, queen takes, and he has his checkmate. 
This is the move that's really hard to see if you're looking at it over the board. You give up the queen. Now rook takes, you get your smothered mate, right? King takes, now the other knight that was hanging around comes in, forces the king back. We do the check, and then the rook comes in and finishes him off. Checkmate. So that was pretty, pretty tricky. So this is a win for black, and you can see that it would be. Look at this, pit, <laughs> this pitiful rook here. Never, never let that happen to you in your chess games. <laughs> and never let the, your opponent's bishop wedge your king in the, on g1 like that. That's just pitiful. Okay, all black has to do is figure out a way to break through. I believe that Black was a famous American chess champion. He wasn't world champion, but he won numerous, he was like US champion for 20 years or 25 years. His name was Frank Marshall. You know, they made a chess club at, in New York City that was there for a long time named the Marshall Chess Club. Frank had a lot of rich friends. He was from New York and they set him up with the chess club and that allowed him to pursue his chess career <laughs> because they, they uh, paid his living expenses and, and his touring expenses. But anyway, Frank was known to be one of the greatest combinative players of the day. He was right up there with the top players in the world what held him back, and he didn't make world champion, was he, was a little, he wasn't as good in positional chess as the world champion Lasker and Capablanca, the Cuban, and Alekhine. But he was in the next tier. He was in the top 10 for many years. So anyway, he's black here. Now, obviously, what you want to do, you want to get one of the rooks either here, guarded, it is guarded by the bishop though, but if this rook could come here, that would be checkmate, right? Or if a rook could come here and here, that would be checkmate. Of course, this square is guarded by the pawn and the bishop, so this ain't gonna work. You might work here. That bishop guards the square. That bishop's not really a problem, is it? This rook is attacking that bishop. We can wipe that bishop out and bring the rook up. Or it, I'm not sure the exact order, but that's the general idea. Okay, it's Black's move. Let's see what Marshall does. Oh, Marshall has a completely different idea. I told you he was good at tactics. So he plays, he gives up the rook and he threatens the bishop on c3 and the pawn on f3. And if pawn takes rook, he's got it figured out. He swings the rook here. He gets a discovered check. He swings over here. And he picks up the rook and the bishop. And he's at least a bishop ahead. So. It would go, what would it go? Something like this, here, here, and here, and he's a whole rook up. So that's his basic idea. Pretty darn good. That's a hard move to see. How many people would think of putting their rook where a pawn could take it? If you're thinking about it in your mind's eye, you might just skip right over it because it doesn't make any sense at all, but you would miss that the rook could come over. In effect, that pawn on f2 is pinned because of the strong move rook to g2. So you have to look at every possible move. You don't want to jump to conclusions, I can't go my rook to e3 because he just takes it. See, that's jumping to a conclusion. However, the computer said that Marshall's win was only one way to win. There's another way to win. Remember I told you that one rook could take out the bishop? 
So we could start this way and then swing our rook up here. And it turns out that rook to g6 wins, bishop to d2, and we get a checkmate. This is actually a little faster than Marshall. Marshall had to work hard with an ending. He was only a rook up, but I guess that wasn't working too hard. But this would have been a checkmate. So Marshall does get an ex, uh, he, he made the prettier move. Now, uh, we, we saw what happens if pawn takes rook. Uh, the computer says a little better is moving the bishop up here. Then Marshall would take the pawn. The bishop would come down here. The rook would come back here. Bishop would take the rook. Then we get the g6. And we get our checkmate on move five. Whereas if you had done it this way, you get your checkmate on move four, but who's picky? I would be happy with the checkmate either way. Okay, let's go on to our next example. This one is another win by Black. I've actually gone through this example when I was going through, uh, before this book, I was doing tactics by the book by Siegbert Teresh, The Game of Chess. It was written about the same time, and this example was in that. It turns out, black to play and win, this is a famous game by America's only other world champion besides Bobby Fischer. His name was Paul Morphy. He was 20 years old before the Civil War. He was, he was studied to be a lawyer. He was too young to practice law. He had to wait till he was 21. His hobby was chess. He won the first United States championship the preceding year or earlier in the year in New York City. He did so well the European chess masters invited him to travel to Europe and play the best players in France, Germany, and England. And because he couldn't start his law practice, he went on over there. And he played all the best masters, and he wiped them all out. Now, he did lose a few games here and there. Some in the book, they said, well, he was kind of seasick. He had to go by, by sea, and it took like a month or something. And apparently it upset his, uh, he didn't have sea legs. He was a land lover from New Orleans. So anyway, uh, he lost, he would typically lose the first couple games against his opponent, or maybe a draw here and there, and then he would t understand how his opponent played chess, and then he would win all, almost all the other games after that. So this is a famous game from the first U.S. championship. He's playing another grandmaster named Lewis Paulson. Lewis Paulson had come to America from Germany. There's a Paulson defense that's still played today in the Sicilian defense. It's named after this Lewis Paulson. Lewis Paulson was no slouch. He could play 15 blindfold games against opponents at this time. And Paul Morphy could do the same. So they were pretty evenly matched. The difference was Paul Morphy would make his decisions really fast. And Lewis Paulson would actually sit there and ponder his moves for a half hour to an hour. This was before they had clocks. They said when Morphy was playing Paulson, some of the games might last eight hours. They said at times it looked like Morphy had tears in his eyes <laughs> as he was waiting for Paulson to make a move. And then Morphy would whip this move out and have to sit there for another 45 minutes. But anyway, anyway, this is a beautiful attacking combination by Black. We'll just jump into it. It's quite complicated. But let me point out what's wrong with White's position. See how his queen is on the queen side and it's blocked by the black bishop and pawns and can't come help defend the king side. The black, the white rook on a, a2 is blocked by his pawns. 
He hasn't developed his bishop on c1. The only thing defending the king's side is the white bishop and the white rook on f1. Now the queen does protect the rook, but that, that's only one diagonal. It's not sufficient. And notice that all black's pieces are aiming toward the king's side. The two rooks, at some point, the rook can come down to the e1 square protected by the other rook, take out that rook on f1, and then the bishop can come, once that rook on e6 is out of the way, the bishop can come to h3 and join an attack on the king's side. So black is all set up for a spectacular attack, and he starts off with the queen takes bishop. It's fairly difficult to see exactly how he's going to win, but we can see that he gets a strong attack. Now the g files opened up, and look how convenient it is that black's rook is on the six, so he can slide in front of his pawns and attack the white king forcing the king in the corner. Then the bishop drops down. Now he's threatening to win. Bishop down check, and bishop takes pawn. That's actually a checkmate threat. So white has to move the rook on f1 somewhere. The best, he, he can't go to g1 because the rook takes, and the other rook comes to e1, and that's a checkmate. Or the queen comes back, and then the, the rook takes, and that's the checkmate. So he has to go to d1. Now we get drop in our bishop, so we're going to have some fun with the white king. Force it over to f1. Now, let's not forget this bishop is very strongly attacking this pawn here. So don't forget that bishop. The, be the best move to win for black is to play rook to the second. Threatening rook takes f pawn check. And then the king would have to go over to g1, but that opens up the bishop diagonal. You see that? So we can move the, the rook back to g2, and then the bishop is on that g1 square, and we go rook to g1 as checkmate. If the white king goes to h1, it's a double check that when the rook moves to g1, it's a check by the rook and the bishop on f3. And don't forget the rook's protected by the bishop, so there's no escape score, that's a checkmate. And if the king goes to back to f1, we have rook to g1 checkmate because there's nothing to take the rook. Okay, so he doesn't really have a move, and now we see what I was talking about. The prettiest one is he goes, well, if he goes here, it's just here. And the same thing happens if he goes over here because we get the double check and he can't do rook takes rook because the bishop is checking him, and he can't do queen takes bishop because the rook is checking him. So it's double check with mate. So that was Paul Morphy. He was pretty good. Bobby Fischer said Paul Morphy was extremely good, and that if Paul Morphy lived in the day that Fischer lived in and had access to all the theory and opening books, he would be just a world contender even then. Okay, now we go back to a win by white. This is much simpler than the ones we've been looking at. So I'm going to leave it up to the audience to figure this one out. White to play and win. Excellent idea. That bishop's pinned and can't take the queen. Now we threaten either bishop takes or, well, we threaten queen takes would be checkmate. There's only one move for black. What is it? He has to protect the bishop. The only piece he can protect it with is the rook. Now, this is a little harder. You saw the, the key move. 
What, what do you think is the follow-up? You guys have been sacrificing pieces all night. Keep it up. <laughs> yeah, bishop takes. Queen takes. Oh, look, the queen was defending two squares, remember? It was defending d8 from the white queen check, and it was defending f2. That's an overworked queen. So you divert the queen. Now we get our check. He has to interpose, and we get our checkmate. Anyway, that'll do it for tonight. Thanks for coming.